Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the French Connections Tuesday edition. Today's date is May 3rd, 2011. Of course, my name is Daryl Bradford Smith. Great to have you here for another important broadcast of, uh, of information that I don't think you can get anywhere else uh, of the same level. I, I really have looked around the internet and I, I get partial um, truth from people and a lot, of, a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, they've been you know, listening to people like Alex Jones or people like um, <clears throat> even Jeff Rents for that matter. And they mix or they they uh, they get it on um, what's this uh, this late night radio show where they put some truth on and then they talk about space aliens and um, but anyway the point I'm trying to make is is that we've always tried to keep it clean here and keep it straight and get and be political about things and to follow the money and when you're dealing with um, with a cabal of uh, Zionist bankers that control um, much if not all of the world. Uh, you know much of their power base is based in currencies and trading and bonds and uh, and how they leverage things in the international marketplace. And um, when you're taking a look at 9/11, for example, uh, there was huge t there was tons of missing gold from the from the vaults down below of the trade center. There was a hundred million worth of outside trades made just in advance of the of the implosion. Uh, and and when you follow who was making these things, it leads to the same people we've always uh, put our fingers on. And it is this this Zionist cabal. Now, again, Zionism doesn't mean uh, Jewish all the time. There there are Christian Zionists out there that are supporting this crime wave, uh, but by and large, the leadership has always been in the hands of, of very high level Jews and Oppenheimers and Levies, Goldsmiths, uh, and and even the uh, King and Queen of of, uh, of England. I mean, the Prince and the Queen of England uh, have ties to this group. And so uh, w when you start sussing it out and you follow the money, you end up coming up with a different type of truth. And it's well, well based in fact. And now we're coming into an, a new phase here. And my guest tonight uh, has a great a deal to say on these subjects. In fact, he put up a great video uh, uh, today. I ha when I picked it up this morning, it had 350 um, uh, downloads. Uh, I checked it uh, this afternoon, it had 5,000 already. So um, it's getting it's getting the circulation it deserves. Hopefully, uh, um, tens of thousands of people will see it. Of course, his name is Adrian Salabucci, and uh, we've done great work together. And he knows better than anybody uh, how the money and the power and the um, and the political intrigue all marry together. And we're going to talk a little bit about the possibility of World War III coming on the heels of this Mr. Bin Laden fake deal and how many other things are happening in the world. But I'll bring him up right now. Adrian, are you with me? Good evening, Daryl. Great talking to you, my friend. Well, it's it's great to have a, a, have been able to grab you today after seeing uh, the, the nine lives of bin Laden. I, I didn't think anybody had said it better. And I said to myself, geez, you know, uh, maybe uh, maybe Adrian's got to get on here and, and talk about this. Um, we I knew right away uh, back in, in 2002 when I really started digging my heels into some of this information that this guy, Bin Laden, uh, had something wrong with him. Now, I, I didn't know then that he was working for the American government, of course, but I knew something was, was awry. And over the, year, over the years, a lot of information has come out on this man's ties to the CIA, to the MI6, uh, and, and even to, uh, to the Saudi Arabian um, uh, wealth funds. This guy was put up as a, uh, as a throwaway cr a criminal, I think, or as a terrorist uh, t in, in waiting. Um, possibly because he was terminally ill. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe they said, you know, this uh, this c c kidney dialysis isn't working for you there, o o Osama. Uh, but we could put you to good use, and your family would profit from it uh, richly. And of course, you know that uh, the Bush family uh, had contracts with um, with the Bin Ladens, and not to mention the fact that they are the largest building company in all of Saudi Arabia. So most of the large building projects go to the Bin Laden family. But more than that, this guy was uh, was Tim Osman in some of his uh, incantations, and he was also um, working as a as a go between in the uh, Taliban fight against the Russians. And um, of course, he was instrumental in organizing um, fighters to go into Serbia on behalf of the United States. They weren't calling them Al Qaeda at the time, but those same people that they got in there to, to fight in Serbia ended up morphing into um, Al Qaeda just a couple of years later. Same faces, same people, same roots, same backing, same money, same everything. So 
Uh, let's get into talking about those nine lives and, and maybe give everybody a, a good background on, on what you found when you did some research, Adrian. Well, in a way, I thought that he reminded me when, when I saw this uh, these flash breaking news on CNN on Sunday evening. I, I, I thought all of a sudden of uh, Lewis Carroll's Cheshire Cat. Remember the little Cheshire Cat that just keeps on appearing and disappearing? And always always smiling, always smiling, yeah. Always smiling. The last thing that disappears is the smile. So I figure, you know, Osama bin Laden probably is a Cheshire Cat who appears and disappears. And I started looking through a couple of, of, of uh, things that were out in the Internet. And I figured, well, hang on a minute. He's been declared dead nine times already prior to the alleged uh, killing of Osama bin Laden last Sunday in Afghanistan. Because if you, if and, I'm, and you know, and from very good sources, I start out by saying that back in 26 December 2001, Fox News reported on a Pakistan Observer newspaper story that had officially pronounced Osama bin Laden dead uh, uh, the, 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 the on the previous month. Now then you have the second time he died, that was in 18 January 2002, when Pakistani President Pervez Musharraf announced very bluntly, I think he is dead, yeah, he should know. Then on July 17, 2002, listen to this, Daryl, the then head of counterterrorism at the FBI, mm -hmm. Dale Watson, said, I personally believe that bin Laden is not with us anymore, although he, he clarified, I have no evidence to support that. Fourth life. October 2002, Afghan President Hamid Karzai told CNN that I've, been, I've come to the conclusion that bin Laden is definitely dead. November 2005, Republican Senator Harry Reid revealed that he had been told that Osama had been killed in Pakistan in an earthquake that took place in October of 2005. Sixth death. September 2006, French intelligence leaks a report which says that Osama had died in Pakistan also. November 2, 2007, this is the seventh life, and this is probably the most important document of all. Former Pakistani Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto told Al Jazeera's David Frost that Omar Sheikh had actually killed Osama bin Laden and that she had all the, the clear information proving that. Now, she said this to David Frost on um, Al Jazeera on 2nd November 2007, and unfortunately, she was assassinated on 27th December 2007, just six weeks later. Now, the funny thing, and, and, and anybody can watch the video because it's on, on, the in, on YouTube, is that when she says, I know that Osama bin Laden has been killed, and I know the guy who killed him, you would have expected David Frost that the British uh, journalist who became so famous when he interviewed Richard Nixon and so forth, you would have expected him to say, well, hang on a minute, tell us a little bit more. No, he just brushed it aside, ignored completely the comment, and went on to talk about something yeah, else. So that right. was uh, the seventh life. Yep. The eighth life came in March 2009 when U.S. Foreign Intelligence <laughs> Officer and Professor of International Relations at Boston University, Angelo Codevilla, said, all the evidence we have suggests that Elvis Presley is more alive today than Osama bin Laden. And the ninth life, May 2009, Pakistani President Asif Ali Zardari confirmed that his counterparts in the American intelligence agencies had told him that bin Laden hadn't been heard of over the past seven years, so he most certainly must be dead. And all of a sudden, on Sunday, we are told that he's been taken by the Americans. He is shot in the head, and in order to, uh, because nobody, no country wanted to have him, they dumped him into the sea. Do they take us for a bunch of absolute idiots, Daryl? Well, I, I, well, here's the funny thing: on, on the news in the in the French news over here, uh, they claim that um, according to Muslim tradition, they tossed him in the sea. There's no Muslim. Oh. There is absolutely no t tradition in Islam. Uh, to toss somebody in the sea uh, when they die. Now, uh, but but they actually said this on on the news, and I, I'm sitting there. I looked at my wife. I said, "Oh my God!" You know, the the the, the parade of, of lies just keeps coming. But there was another thing that came out by the CIA uh, uh, in 2001 when the guy was in. It was before the attack um, uh, on 9/11, where where he was met in a um, in a uh, ho hospital room during a dialysis treatment. And he had a CIA uh, operative in the room with him, and reports were leaked out that this guy was meeting with, this, with the uh, American government at that time. Now, he had been outed um, as a middleman by uh, no, none other than Colonel Muammar Gaddafi uh, back in, in 98. Uh, he was uh, 
doing some mischief for the American government, of course. And uh, Gaddafi was uh, caught short by one of his um, operations, and uh, he contacted Interpol about it because, uh, he, you know, he thought that the, uh, the the things that the Americans were doing through this guy, uh, Bin Laden, uh, deserved the world to know. And so there's so much here, but the guy hasn't been heard from. Now, you know, do you and I both know that he's absolutely was dead and didn't, they didn't do it? You know, nobody can say that to a, an absolute certainty, but I can tell you the story they've told is to an absolute certainty not true and now I, whatever the true story is we can work on sussing that out but i can certainly say that what they told us isn't true well you know I, 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 there's so much information here and i think it's such a, a tremendous service that the french connection does to public opinion by by, by discussing and addressing these these points straight on that uh you know it, it, it can't be understated what, one final comment did you know that the uh, Benazir Bhutto interview I just mentioned a few minutes ago yeah. was pu was it, it was it was then commented on well naturally by Al Jazeera they had no choice because it was on their channel and then by the Russian Pravda service and by newspapers in India in Pakistan etc but not one Western newspaper carried the story not the New York Times not the Guardian not the Financial Times nobody carried that story it was only carried let's say in the Middle East and in the Far East so there definitely was a specific desire to block that information from the Western minds you then mentioned the, Carl, the, uh, the uh, Osama bin, the bin Laden family being associates of Bush and Jim Baker and yes. Frank Carlucci yes, and all yes. these people in the Carlisle Group which is a, a, an energy investment and development uh, company, it's a, a consultancy you have the Bin Laden family, not Osama but, but his brothers and his uncles and and other relatives being associates with George W. Bush, Frank Carlucci, who was Ronald Reagan's uh, uh, Secretary of Defense, and naturally, well, the Vice President at that time was George Bush uh, Senior. Uh, yeah, yeah, Senior. Uh, you have uh, James Baker III, who was also the Treasury Secretary before the Reagan and, and Bush governments. So you have all these guys, and guess what they were all doing on September 11, 2001? There was a meeting, a board meeting of the Carlyle Group in the Four Seasons Hotel in Washington, D.C. So you had a Bin Laden at, in the Four Seasons Hotel in Washington, D.C., together with George Bush and all these other buddies. And at the same time, you had Osama Bin Laden in a cave in Afghanistan, busy, busy, trying to, to coordinating the smashing up of the World Trade Center and the, uh, uh, and the Pentagon. And oddly enough, and this really adds insult to injury when it comes to our intelligence, we were told that in this compound, compound on 1st of May, last Sunday, they had no internet and no phones. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, you know, the, the, the nonsense of Tora Bora and, uh, you know, these daisy cutter bombs going off and blowing mountaintops up. The interesting thing is the FBI has never formally charged him with any participation in 9-11 because this, they, they, when they brought forward the, the information that they had, uh, none of it led back to him. Um, and all they did was they used the intelligence services, and, and this is foreign intelligence. Of course, the FBI is in on all of this stuff as, as well because they're not telling the truth about anything. Um, but because <clears throat> the, the FBI actually got rid of some of the people they didn't like within their own organization, a guy named John O'Neill was sent there the, that morning to uh, be, to be uh, done away with. And, of course, he died in the, uh, in the implosion of the building. But here's the, here's the point I'm trying to make. They, have, they actually came out and said we don't have any evidence that links him to this crime. So he's never been charged with it, uh, even in in, um, in abstention. And I, I have to say, you know, now that we're looking at this and you watch the these mutton heads, uh, Americans and Europeans all cheering, uh, ding dong, Osama's dead, la la la, and all this nonsense. If it's frightful in the fact that um, we have a populace that is so far out of touch with reality that it's very disheartening for me. I, I have to say, I thought we were doing better than that. Uh, but but clearly we haven't done as well as we have hoped in, in some areas, and this is one of them. Uh, clearly, well, I'm going to disagree. I'm going to disagree with you. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm, I'm going to disagree with you, my friend, because what I think we've seen since Sunday evening is a massive media staging with. A group of people, I don't care if they're a thousand, two thousand, you know that the media can go into ground zero and make it look like all New York City went out to say to, to cheer the death of bin Laden. Or they can do that in Brooklyn. Or they can do that in Chicago. Or they can do that at, at the White true, House. Lawn. True, that's they true. Know, 
we, we, we them, I know from down here, they are experts down here. Every time the government down here in Argentina uh, calls them for uh, some, some big meeting or big manifestation and not enough people go, the media are experts at finding the right angle and putting uh, uh, different images together and fading one in and fading one out and concentrating on a group here or a group there that they make it look like a million people went out there. Only, maybe there's only three or four thousand. And you know, uh, <clears throat> everything you say is, is so very important. John O'Neill, whom you mentioned a few minutes ago, he had been uh, investigating Al Qaeda from the FBI, Al Qaeda and Osama bin Laden ever since the 1993 bombing of the North Tower. But he was so sick and disgusted with the Bush government that kept uh, stopping him and kept stopping him because uh, in 2000, 2000, 2001 they were negotiating with the Taliban and with uh, uh, Al Qaeda to see if they could put through uh, an oil pipeline that would bring oil, the Kazakhi uh, oil from Ta Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan through Afghanistan and out into the Persian Gulf that they said hands off and they really wouldn't let him do anything. He resigned in disgust in August 2001 and the poor guy took on a post as head of security at the World Trade Center. So as you correctly said, he was there on that day and the, the, the bloody building collapsed on top of him. Well, it, 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 here's, here's some of the other stuff that uh, people don't realize. Uh, all of these links that bin Laden supposedly had, especially the, US Col the USS Cole, um, there is very clear evidence of Mossad involvement in that. And um, so if they're going to actually lay the blame of the coal onto him, there was this, there's several people who've uh, done some deep investigation of the coal that bring this uh, conspiracy back to the Mossad. So is is Bin Laden actually Mossad? Um, that certainly, uh -huh. certainly, certainly, if the Mossad wanted him dead, he would have been already uh, part of the you know in the netherworld. The, the fact is, uh, this whole thing is just a, a setup now, and, and I want to get into the reason why uh, they're doing this. And I told you privately, I've been watching the money, and of course that's my big thing. I kind of I kind of follow the money because if you follow the money and see who's fluttering around the periphery of that power base of money, you're going to get a good idea of who's doing what to who. And, Absolutely. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. The, the U.S. dollar is, re, is fast approaching 72 on the basket of currencies. Now, that is, uh, for, for anybody's memory, that is the low point. It, it was reached a couple of years back uh, as the low point. It bounced off 72 and went higher. Last week, the dollar was charging down and almost in a free fall went through uh, 73 and was going down to 72.5. It was heading for 72. There was an absolute panic because once 72 is, is broken, there is no support for the dollar below 72. You're going to see a reevaluation of the dollar. That What happens with that? AAA status was gone after. Uh, um, all of the reserve currency links to uh, the dollar would be blown out of the water. All of the treasury bills that have uh, ties to, uh, to, to the present system would all be blown up. Now, they ultimately know the dollar is going to die, but they have not uh, got all their ducks in a row to have it do uh, happen on their own schedule. Um, things have gotten out of control for them on many uh, levels, and so they panicked and they needed something. And of course, whenever you need a diversion, uh, you know, you try to pull out uh, Fukushima, you try to pull out, you know, um, I don't know, um, may, may, you know, what, what's his name? Um, uh, Michael Jackson has risen up from the dead or something, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't know what they'll put out there, but they'll put out some crap, you know. Um, but this one, they needed a big play. Um, and they've been angling for World War III, and we've talked extensively about that ultimate goal, to get rid of the nation state and to run everybody down into a, into a poverty state where they come in after the kill-off, and there's going to be a die-off uh, of terrible proportions coming. Uh, just simply by uh, the, the poisoning of the northern hemisphere that's going on right now. Uh, ten years from now, the cancer rates are just going to be so shocking that nobody's even going to be able to scratch their head and, and understand it. I understand it because I, I know the dangers of high levels of, of different types of radiation, and I know what the, that long-term exposure does to your immune system and to your ability to fight cancers. And so the northern hemisphere is, is up for a real major die-off and a war would be a perfect fit right around now to uh, to kind of mask all of the, the machinations of this group and get rid of national boundaries. And it's something you talked about extensively. You want to go into a little bit about the boundary crushing of nation states? 
Well, yeah, uh, definitely this all ties in so well. And I particularly, I'm particularly concerned because down where I am, which is in the southern hemisphere, in the southern tip of the southern hemisphere, uh, we run the risk of being overwhelmed and overrun by these guys, especially since our governments have all but disarmed Argentina and deconstructed our entire uh, military uh, uh, installations. And if you look at a map of the world, you will see that practically all the land masses are in the northern hemisphere. South of the equator, you have about two-thirds of South America, about, I don't know, 40% of Africa, and you have, well, Australia, you have New Zealand, a couple of islands, and that's the end of that. So there's not that map, much land here. Where you do have a huge land mass is Antarctica, which is great for natural, for raw materials and natural resources, but it's not really habitable. Now, everything you're saying is so very true, and what really concerns me, and that's why I put that in that video as a slow-appearing comment at the very end for people to read and let it sink in, is that last night David Cameron said it on TV, I also heard Hillary Clinton say it on TV, and a whole army of commentators from Fox News and direct from the Pentagon and blah, 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 all kept saying the same thing, is that now that we've killed Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda is going to strike back. So we have to be on high alert because Al-Qaeda are going to strike back at us, yeah. which means that they are announcing that there will be a false flag event that's going to dwarf 9-11. Well, they're already I, talking I, nuke. They're already saying nuke. Now, that would fit in with the, with the pollution levels we were already starting to see. You wouldn't know if we got it from Fukushima or we got it from a neutron device. Who knows? It would be perfect. It would be the perfect alibi. I always have, have this, this rather, I'll, I'll, be, I'll make self-criticism, ridiculous dream, but, you know, I'll, I'll blurt it out anyway, that for some reason or another, they will pick a town which will serve uh, their purposes as best as possible. For example, a false flag on Chicago or New York or London or Paris. I can't see that. Because it's, it's going to be a false flag. The, the disruption to their own machinery of vaporizing New York or London or Chicago is just too big. So it, it, it will be a, too much self-inflicted damage. You know, it's like firing a shot at your own foot. I always think that it's going to be something with high impact, but which is uh, they can uh, dispense with. For example, Phoenix, Arizona, smack in the middle of the desert. <clears throat> by the way, very low Jewish population, by the way, very low Jewish population, isolated or pretty much isolated so that any damage can be contained. And I can even imagine, with the name of Phoenix, they can make a whole big lullaby about saying, we will make Phoenix rise from its ashes, etc., etc., etc. So I believe it's going to be a town along those lines. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will be a small town in Europe. Maybe it will be Buenos Aires in Argentina. They can do away with Buenos Aires and they couldn't give a damn. And they would say, oh, look what look what international terrorism did. They blew up Buenos Aires or Sao Paulo or something like that. But something along those lines is coming. That's why when all those idiots go into Ground Zero or the White House and start grunting, you know, Ding Dong, Osama, etc., 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 they are doing exactly what these people wanted to do, yeah. and they're whipping up that there will be a new false flag that will revitalize the war against terrorism. And, and <clears throat> excuse me, it's exactly what they need at, at this time, and it will divert the attention away from the, the the ultimate and imminent implosion of the dollar. They need to carry this dollar uh, currency, world currency, a little longer, uh, because the transition from where they are now to the a Bank of International Settlement special drawing rights, which they, they, that'll do away with a national and and um, and trans border uh, currencies, and, and and make everybody go through a, a special centralized banking structure where every single um, uh, ducat that goes out is accounted for um, through this central bank, one central bank for everyone, and the possibility of that being the case is not um, uh, far off, but it's certainly. It's not employable at the moment, and they need to transition out of the dollar. Um, they need to confiscate more things with the, with the with these fun, with this funny money dollars that they still got left. I mean, you know, if I get some money in the United States and I need to transfer uh, it to an account here, of course you can go to any ATM in, in Europe and take money out from the United States. It's 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 a, a marvelous uh, um, bit of technology. However, there is going to come a time in a very short while where uh, no money will be available f uh, coming out of the United States. In fact, nothing will be. Uh, and, and I don't know if you've seen this latest report where the State Department is now going to require people who want a passport 
to uh, oh, yes, yeah. to say every single employer they've ever had um, the name yeah. of the supervisor, his home phone number. They want to wow. know. They want two people who witnessed your live birth to be on record as saying that they saw it. And this is the, the long form. And they they're going to be able to. State Department can pull out this long form uh, anytime they need it. Uh, and and say well no you didn't meet the standard and so no you can't get a passport all this stuff is in, and they're actually uh, I mean the, the the audacity of these people to tell me that I can't leave uh, the United States boy how far have we fallen I mean Adrian the the tyranny doesn't, the, doesn't that remind you of the former Soviet Union exactly they, they, right. They built the Berlin Wall not so that the West Germans wouldn't go into East Germany, but exactly the other way around, so that the East Germans couldn't leave uh, uh, East Germany into the West. It's it's become exactly the same thing. Globalization is the communist model. You know, by the way, for the folks who are hearing us, uh, everything that we're saying, everything that that Daryl is saying, is absolute fact. I would invite anybody who wants to do this after listening to the show to uh, log in to www.fbi.gov. Look up the, the list of 10 most wanted men. You will see that 10 faces come up. The fifth face is Osama bin Laden. They've added on a little red tag that says disease. And when you do a double click on, the, on Os, uh, Os, 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 Osama bin Laden's face, it says that he is wanted for the bombing of the embassies in Kenya and in Tanzania, the bombing of the USS Cole, blah, 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 blah. There is not one single word about Ob uh, Osama having been involved with 9-11. So it's, even the FBI has no proof connecting Osama bin Laden with 9-11. That's right. That's right. And, and there is, there is uh, uh, information that connects him to the Mossad and the Cole. Now, yep. and and through and through their Yemeni, Yemeni uh, connections that that they've got, I, you know, uh, this stuff is. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here again um, with Russia, and and I've been watching um, the Russian uh, RT, and uh, I watched Russia RT, and of course they are spewing the exact line of the West. There is not a single bit uh, you could you couldn't slice a, 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 a human hair between the differences between their reporting on bin Laden and what New York Times is putting out or what the Le Figaro is putting out or what uh, The Guardian is putting out. They're all putting out the same story. <clears throat> the only network that has uh, um, thrown a couple of monkey wrenches in the deal is Press TV. And yeah. they, have, they have said, well, you know, maybe they, maybe they got bin Laden, maybe they didn't. But, um, you know, there's some questions about that. And, uh, we, and we're not on board with that stuff completely and blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm very surprised. Um, you see, and here's the other thing. RT, uh, Russian television, uh, is actually uh, very closely tied to the, to the Russian government. No major press outlet in Russia gets away with saying anything. They don't say anything on their broadcasts that has not been cleared, at least on some level, through the government. And so now I've had other people say, well, it's because, you know, the Russians are playing a quid pro quo game. They, you know, they've got secrets they don't want out. So they, they kind of keep the secrets of the West and, and this and that. And, and I, I'll say, OK, you know, maybe there is a little bit of truth to that. But the, the, the Zionist Jews have never relinquished their control over Russia. It's too big of a prize. There are too many natural resources in their ground. And there's just simply too much wealth sitting there on that landmass for these people to walk away from it and they never have and i and i i challenge anybody to prove otherwise now that being said that means that that there is no opposition save the the maybe the iranian people now i'm not even sure the iranian government's 100% clean but i certainly know the people of iran are and i certainly know the people of egypt are um and if you if you get the the, the word on the street from either tehran or from alexandra or from cairo the word is going to be that these people um, are, are squarely against Israel in, in, in to the 90% region. They are fully aware that uh, that they've been had. These revolutions have been manipulated. They know the game. The people on the streets know the game. Um, whether or not they're going to be able to translate that into something in advance of this war is a big if. And frankly, uh, especially the Egyptians, they just don't have the weaponry and the power to stand up against this onslaught. Now, Let's talk a little bit about Libya. I, I want your take on Libya before we get involved in, in, in anything else, because it seems to me that they wanted to fleece the, the wealth fund uh, and, and then underpin the dollar for a little while longer. And so they took his uh, the Libyan wealth fund was confiscated. 
and that was put into accounts uh, for, for in the West. So was they have they have their eyes on 150 tons of the Libyan gold, I think, right now, and I think uh, um, Gaddafi. Has